Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Silhouette Sunday video. In today's video, I'm going to be working on a project and this is very much a beginner level project. So I am going to be doing personalized water bottles for my department and I figured I would walk you through the process if you're interested in doing a similar project, especially if you are a beginner. So to get started, I have measured my water bottle and I know that the kind of workable real estate is approximately six by two and a half inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle on my cutting mat that measures six by two and a half. And really the purpose of this is to serve later as a weeding box and I'll know exactly how much space I have to type my font. So I have it on my mat and I've selected it and I'm gonna go ahead at the top and resize this so that it's exactly six inches by two and a half inches. So I know my title and whatever saying I put under each name has to fit in this box. Now the font I'm going to be using for this particular project is a, I believe it's a, Miss, a Missy Meyer font. It's called Garlic Butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my text tool on the left and then click on my mat and type the first name, which is Miss Anderson. So as you can see, it defaulted to the regular font and I'm going to go ahead and change it by highlighting all of it and then clicking down up here and going to Garlic Butter. Now, Garlic Butter is one of those fonts that has a lot of alternative letters in it. And I'm on a Mac, so this is going to look different if you're on a Windows unit. Um, I will try to link down below to directions on how to get to the character map in Windows. But in, if you're, it's the same thing, but it's different names if you're on Windows. So if on a Mac, it's called Font Book. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Font Book. And you can see all of my fonts are listed here and Garlic Butter is right here. And right now, these are just the regular letters, but there's actually some extra letters in this font that are not shown. So I'm gonna click on View and change it to Repertoire. And now I can see there are other forms of characters. So here's a special RS that's different that I'm going to use in the project and see how it looks. So I'm gonna copy this. And then I'm going to select these two letters and paste on top. And then this E is too big. So I'm gonna go back to my font book again and see if there's a different style of E. Now, unfortunately, the bottom of my screen is cut off, so you can't see, but the menu bar is at the bottom. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and see if there is a lowercase e, because I think that would look better than the capital letter that is currently being shown. So here's a regular e, right here, a lowercase e. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy it and paste it on top of this E. So I'm going to backspace that out and just paste the little E in. So this looks pretty good. And I do have some letter overlap here, so I'll have to weld that together. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and place this in the box. And in terms of size, that looks pretty good. Now, underneath, I'm going to draw a bar. So I'm going to select this rectangle tool here, and I'm going to draw a small bar underneath. And I may end up resizing this later, depending on how the project goes. And I'm gonna put another line of text in. So I'm gonna grab my text tool again, or my font tool, click on my mat, and um, I teach special ed, if any of you are wondering, <laughs> or I work in the special ed department. Um, so the bottom line's gonna read IEP prep and recovery. Now we do have a running joke that recovery is not found in a water bottle, but it has to be found in a water bottle at work. So this is incredibly long, so I'm gonna end up resizing this, but for now I'm gonna double click this, highlight it and change it back to that same font, garlic butter. And this is going to have to be a lot smaller. So I'm just gonna scale this down Now you can see this bounding box is really big. 
And the reason it's really big is because my text box is really big. So if I double click to get that cursor back and I shrink this down, this box will become smaller too. Just a quick tip. And the reason I mentioned this is because I'm going to do some alignment and that box will actually throw off my alignment here in a second. So now that I have each portion of my uh, text laid out, I'm gonna zoom in just so it's a little easier for me to see. And I actually need to weld these different areas together. So in Anderson, this R and M are touching, this O and N here are touching and they need to be welded together. So I'm going to right click and I'm gonna go down to weld and everything's gonna turn into its own letter. And to keep this together when I move it, I'm gonna go ahead and right click again and hit group. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for this IEP prep and recovery. I'm going to right click and instead of hitting weld, I'm actually going to click ungroup because I wanna move some of these letters apart. So this R and this Y and E are really close together, like uncomfortably close. So I'm gonna go ahead and move those apart. And you can do this with any of the letters that you think are just too close for comfort or you think weeding or cutting are going to be difficult. So once you're happy with where your letters appear, go ahead and draw a box around to select them. And I actually missed the I, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go ahead and hit weld just because I know this O and V are touching. And I'm gonna right click one more time and hit group. In terms of alignment, I could eyeball this, but that's not a guarantee that it's going to be lined up perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of my pieces. So I'm gonna select this part that says IEP Prep and Recovery, the little bar and her name. And I'm going to go to this Align tool on the right. And actually it's the Transform menu. And I'm gonna click that I want it to align center. So now I know everything is centered. So now my design is all ready to be cut out and move to my bottle. Here you can see my design is all cut out and I'm just going to remove that rectangle and use my silhouette pick tool to remove the interiors of all of the individual letters. Now this final is Oracal in metallic gold and it is very easy to weed. But if you struggle to see the cut lines, one recommendation I have for you is to use a light board and that way you'll be able to see the cut lines easier if that's something you struggle with. But once I have all of the interiors of each of the letters pulled out, I'm going to use a piece of transfer tape to remove the design off of the backer sheet. So I'm going to rub over the design until I'm sure that it's going to release from that backer page and I'm going to take it and stick it down on my bottle. Now you wanna make sure your bottle is really clean before you stick this down, including using maybe alcohol wipes to make sure there's no oil. That way you get good contact with your decal. And I like to use the top red line to make sure that I got the placement straight before I rub it down and in place on the bottle. So after I've rubbed the design onto the bottle, I just remove the backer sheet. And here is a quick look at the final product. And as always guys, thanks for watching.